All right, time for a little more Highlander, just in time for the holidays. Uh, it's being recorded the day before Thanksgiving, so hopefully if you're watching this on Thanksgiving that you have an amazing holiday with your family and friends. Anyway, uh, so here's the deck that I'm planning to play. This is different from last time. It is still a five-color deck with a lot of control elements because that's kind of my jam. But this eschews the aggro build, which was this, and moves into a Oath of Druids control build uh, that tries to insulate itself against some of the tools that a uh, mono red deck might have to take me out early with uh, Blood Moon and uh, Price of Progress. I have extra basic lands in here. In fact, my land count is very high. I've given up on some utility lands in order to play the lands that I'm playing. There's a uh, good amount of pressure and defense here. And of course, the goal is the namesake, get an Oath of Druids out. You do have the ability to run Forbidden Orchard, many ways to go get it. Uh, you just put this combo together, or you can do it with Oko and force him to have a creature that way. And, uh, and then you also up one of these big dogs here, Grizzlebrand, Sphinx, Steelwind, Imperial Archangel, all of them have the ability to defend your life total. So they were chosen for a number of different reasons. Um, they were mainly chosen, Grizzlebrand is just, it sort of the do everything card. Uh, it's a quick clock, it gains life, it draws cards, it does it all. Uh, these, incidentally, all these creatures fly, so we're running main deck moat. Uh, secondly, there's Sphinx of the Steel Wind, who's just a will, uh, an ability to gain life while defending your life total, taking theirs away, um, because it has Vigilance. And then Imperial Archangel, which can attack, deal damage to your opponent, damage dealt that would be dealt to you is dealt to the Archangel instead. Now, there was a time where this card was incredibly broken, and that was when uh, Planeswalkers had first came out. In order to damage Planeswalkers, you had to deal damage to me, and then you had to redirect the damage to the Planeswalker. But because the damage would get redirected to the Archangel, you couldn't redirect it to my Planeswalkers. It was super, super busted. Um, now, of course, you can just direct damage Planeswalkers, um, and that effect doesn't happen. But it's still extremely powerful. It's a way to uh, protect yourself against a card like Sulfuric Vortex, which deals damage to every upkeep and prevents life gain while it's in play. And because uh, it just deals damage to the angel every upkeep. And um, the main thing, though, about it also has Shroud. So the thing about the angel and the Sphinx that caused them to be recommended over a few other cards is that unlike Grizzlebrand, they are not legends, which means you don't just get hosed by Caracas. If you play all legendary threats and your opponent's able to Caracas them back into your hand, then you kind of have nothing and you could be in a lot of trouble. There's a lot more going on with this deck that I could talk about perhaps in a deck tech video, but um, I've got f my opponent waiting, so uh, let's uh, let's get started. And let's get in the right room. So we'll get out of this room here, go over to specialty, and I'm going to go to free form, not tournament practice, because it actually does games of two with 30 minute time limits which I don't find too fun. Freeform open play, we get games of one with 60 minute time limits. We can play as many games as we want, but this way with the uh, 60 minute time limit in a single game, you can just focus on uh, learning the deck better. Um, Glenelendra not in this deck because we only have the three creatures. There's a lot going on here, um, more than I can possibly um, explain fully. I think this is a keep, but it's a real sketchy keep, isn't it? It doesn't really have a way, you know, I don't think so. It doesn't really have a way, I mean, this is a way to draw cards maybe in ice, but I, of course I have to find a blue land. It's a little bit sketchy. This is stronger, but we're missing land. I don't know how I get mana screwed when I add land to decks. Uh, okay, I guess I'm dead. Not a good start. Keep three of these, huh? Um, is there any way that I can possibly... Is a two land hand, is a two card hand better than this? I don't know that it is. I guess I have to keep this. And then I'm going to get rid of 
I'm not going to keep Borsa Will. I'm going to have to dump the deed. I'm going to have to dump this direction, Borsa Will, and one other card. It's going to have to be preordained and be done. This is usually a threat on turn one, but not on a mulligan to three. So my only hope here is to Vampiric Tutor Oath. I don't know what he's playing, and if my opponent's deck's vulnerable to that, then great. Um, you know, I'd have to get a fetch land and pick up a bayou or something like that. But um, one of the reasons that I'm a little bit hesitant about the uh, basic lands was precisely what you saw there, where my other hand was probably keepable if I had a dual land, but with a basic, it was just a little bit weak. Um, on the other hand, I think overall, I mean, I've upped the manic base from 30, what was the other one? 35, I think I was down to 33 at one point, up to 36. So really I can look at those lands as just extra permanence. Um, I also have land tax in here. Uh, so I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, but pretty pretty bad situation for me here. Um, just gonna pass. So there's only two ways I can win that I can see. I can Vampiric Tutor into something or I can just sit and do nothing and library my way up. I don't know how that works, but well, there was a vamp eventually. I don't understand why he conceded either. That's weird. Do you have no mana? And then he, I don't know, did you notice my hand was like as small as it was? I'm not really sure. I don't fully understand that. I guess I'll have to ask him afterwards. It's weird. I mean, <sighs> That's that's kind of unfortunate. The the game certainly like with the Imperial with the Vampiric Tutor, there's still a way to win that game for me. Also, yeah, that's the other thing. The deck does run balance. So I mean with balance in the deck, there's always a way to win off of a severe mulligan like that, right? Um I guess I'm gonna keep this and see what happens. I'm I'm not sure. Honestly, like none of these hands have been super stellar. I haven't been incredibly pleased with the way that they've started out but we'll see I may actually want to just increase the amount of deck manipulation that I have in here um, just to smooth out this early game and suddenly my hand looks pretty good Yeah, I still don't know what I'm facing here either. All right, I suppose that's a wasteland target. Hmm. I guess, so with any luck, my opponent will make a play and I'll have the opportunity to counter something so that I'm not forced to discard if I don't draw a land, uh, or I'll draw a land, or I suppose I have to discard Ancient Grudge at some point. Um, very much like to see some mana or some deck manipulation here. Okay, counts as neither, sort of. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump Ancient Grudge here. It's it's just a safe play. Yeah. And I kind of want to be able to make a counter. So I'm not going to do anything here. And then if, if he makes no play, I'll go ahead and uh, ice. And see if I can dig for a little bit of land. Remand my ice. Okay. Hmm. Colonnade um, is a one of the few decent lands that works well with uh, moat based strategy which the stack can default to when oath is not available like you see here 
Uh, yeah, Strix is just fine. Strix can be balanced away. Or grudged off the bottom, or I can use it to trigger an oath. I'm gonna still I'm still gonna ice here. I'm gonna ice the planes. Uh, there are plenty of two mana counters that my opponent could have here, so prefer to fire this off and if my opponent wants to tap out, I suppose. We can do that. Legacy, huh? Okay, well, um, if I can find me something to do here, that'd be real nice. So it could balance. It takes, uh, kills my opponent's Strix in a land. Um, not great. I'll throw away uh, loam is fine. Hmm. Uh, balancing there because I want him to run out of land drops and he just drew a couple of extra cards. So um, I could try to counter here for tempo, but this this may be a balanced turn. We'll see. I'm not under a lot of pressure and I can afford to take a little damage to try to Increase the value of balance to me. So uh, I'd really prefer to get like a land in and do an Imperial Seal type play. Or that is pretty good. Huh. So balance has just gotten a lot more interesting because I can... I can balance, sack my island, force a will their play, and um, it's not too bad. But I think my opponent may still have land as a thing. And what I want to do is I want to use, I want to counter a play like a planeswalker, force to ensure that it gets countered and then balance on my turn after I'm low on cards. That's that's kind of the ideal. So if I balance here, kill these two, kill two cards, probably kill and they take a counter, I force these me with five and it leaves them with five. Um they may have lands. I, I could kill two lands or even three if I sack one to Zernor, which might be worthwhile, especially with the loam in the graveyard, even though I have moat waiting for me, it's probably pretty decent to do that. Um, but I feel like I can wait just a little bit longer. The thing about the pyro is it incentivizes my opponent to want to play, to make plays. And see, this is the thing. I don't want to balance and have my opponent follow up with the land. I want them to have used all the lands in their hand and then balance, kill a bunch of lands in play. They have no land to follow up with. So this, you know, I take three here. I can, with the orb in play, I can probably, like, accept this damage and be okay for a little while. I could just draw a land here. Wouldn't that be amazing? It may be time to balance now, but it might have been time to balance last turn. I, I don't really know. <sighs> okay, yeah, now the damage is getting a little ridiculous, and my opponent's going to draw a card off of that. Uh, 
Okay. We're going to discard something. Vindicate, Imperial Seal. Mode is okay, but it's not great. I can discard the Sphinx, but I can also force with it. And I don't mean forcing with it against this. Um, kind of feel like I should discard Moat, but could regret that. Could discard the Seal. A little tough of a choice there. I, I kind of want to force with that, so I might need the Moat. Indicate looks kind of weak. So I think I'll throw away the moat. So the, the reason I'm doing that is, uh, so what I'm thinking with the Vindicate is that um, if I if I clear this board, and it's getting less and less likely I'll be able to do that. But if I'm able to clear the board, then should my opponent have a follow-up play, I'm going to need Vindicate. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. There's tons of mana over here. I haven't drawn a single fetch, so I I feel like, I don't know. I haven't drawn a fetch. I haven't drawn tax. I haven't drawn tithe. I haven't drawn any of the blue cards that dig. All right, so there's another land. So hopefully my opponent makes a play here so that I can possibly win. Okay. A counter war. I'm going to... See if I can trick my opponent into fighting over this. Um, I might evasive action. So if I evasive action just to tap two of my opponent's lands. Um, they'll tap him. Right, he'll tap him. But if I don't evasive action, if I do counter spell, he may not actually counter back. And I want... And the extra cards don't matter because of balance. So I really want the lands getting tapped. So, interesting. He's gonna gonna counter back. No, he's gonna pay. Okay. Good. So that's what we wanted to happen here. And uh, then it's balance time. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and sack the island and hope that my assessment is correct. That that my opponent's pretty low on lands at the very least. Good lord, <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> it's like comical, honestly. Okay, so we'll dump the Sphinx. And then if it gets forced, I lose, I guess. I mean, this game has been me not being in the game at all. So I could, you know, kill all the lands, but I'm going to need them. And also, if I can draw black, I can Vindicate. If I can get green, I can Loam. Uh, looks like this is going to hit. Hey, son. Says, yeah. You want to say hi? Hi. To the camera? Hi. Okay, cool. All right, son. Thank you. All right, go I enjoy your food, son. Pizza. Good job. You go enjoy your pizza. Okay, cool. So we're in the game again. We'll find out if the opponent has drawn any lands. Two, three, four, five, six. What did I get? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've got, I've got seven, eight lands in their graveyard plus the two in play. So I've done so I've done a pretty good job of timing the balance correctly to attempt to win this game. Oh my goodness, can we please draw? Hmm. 
Okay. Oh, now I'll flip the loam. And then we'll get rid of Abrupt Decay and Imperial Seal. Forest. And loam up a wasteland. Uh, Badlands. And a plateau, I think. No, and an island. And there's a counter for that? And didn't counter my brainstorm. Ah, I see why. Okay. Next turn, I shall try again. All right, so the two cards I put on top, I don't want to draw, of course. So we're going to mill those off to loam. Death right, yep. I suppose I could have waited on the brainstorm, but I really want to get some land drops. Besides, it seemed pretty reasonable to go for it right there. Okay, good. All right, let's loam. I need to get, obviously, wasteland. Uh, I think it's the same group, right? Badlands, island, yeah. So at this point, Deathrite threatens me with um, the ability to start exiling lands, first of all, as well as other cards. The problem is I can't, I have to sit on Counterspell here. It's some damage, but I've got Zern Orb. Mostly I'm concerned about protecting my Wasteland. So I want to uh, play a, uh, get a Counterspell up. I also want to be able to use my Quiet Spec. So I'll get a counter spell up, and then uh, next turn I can um, play a land and vindicate the um, death rate. If my opponent lets me loam here, I'm going to do it. I mean, he needs to exile the loam, right? So actually, I suppose the other option I could vindicate is the uh, his land, but I, I don't think that makes sense. So we'll just do this. Clear the attack step, kill the death right, and then I think we're in good shape. This is why I held on to vindicate. Like I said, the idea was to um, make sure that I could kill their follow up, which I wouldn't have liked it to be death right, but you know. Oh. I can counter or muddle, and I actually think counter's better here because muddle will fetch Oath of Druids. Um, so if this doesn't work out, I'll just go get Oath and punish him for playing the creature. But if this does work out, yeah, exactly, then when my opponent plays their next threat, I'll go get Oath. Either way, it's good. And then if they don't, I can use it as a counter spell for now, and I can go get I can quiet spec. So let's kill the uh, confluence, float some mana, clear my attack step. No, oh, it's gonna tutor. Oops, that's not what I want to see. So what's he tutoring for here? Toxian Probe, yeah, you can definitely have a look. So, tutored, I could quiet spec my opponent to shuffle that away, but um, I don't actually care about Toxian Probe, and it's way more powerful for me to uh, spec myself, so we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll get Mystical Teachings, Ray of Revelation, and Savine's Reclamation, so good. So, I'm um, not super worried about my opponent looking at my hand. Yeah. So, I'm going to um, float an Ancestral here and just let him have a peek. 
um, and sit on Savannah for grudge. But after that, I get to flashback teachings, and of course, I get to Savine's the um, wasteland as well as one of the card, um, one of the permanent. So uh, of three casting costs three or less. So I'd probably just take the wasteland and the um, you know in the plateau. But uh, very nice. Okay, uh, having a little bit of mana problems multiple times is not cool. It could be a bug and not a feature. So we're going to not make any changes here because I, I don't understand why I'm having issues when this deck is just nothing but lands and ways to go get... There's like 70 cards that fix mana. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. Um, pretty good starter. All right. Okay, well, let's see if we can get this going again. Um, there's more dig that I can run. There's plenty, so it's just a matter of how much is right, but holy smokes, this deck is a lot. A lot of tutors and a lot of dig. So let's see what happens here. Uh, I'd like to uh, play. I guess he's trying to decide if he's going to keep his hand. I'm certainly going to keep mine. Pretty awesome, though. It does show you why I invested the one point in balance, because I can't imagine there's any other card in the existence of this entire game which could have saved me from that horrible like horrible horrible mana screw that i was dealing with right like super destructive mana screw and managed to recover because of one card All right, so we're done with that turn. That's good. Oh, hey, uh, I don't have to take damage here, and I can get this thing down, so let's do it. I'm willing to get off of a counter for a turn to get Escanta down, or try. I don't know. There's so many, so many ways my opponent can interact with this, unfortunately. Hmm. Ty, they could have, I suppose they could have played a Zern Orb and then tie they sacrifice the planes my opponent tutors for only one land uh but that seems pretty bad if i do that opponent gets two cards here if they don't if they don't actually um play a land and a spell here um it's draw two discard one and that's not too bad so they still have plateau and godless shrine Of course, if they do make a play here, it's probably something nasty like Dark Confident or that annoying thing. All right, that's right, every game. It's a pretty good answer for a search for Escanta. Uh, I'm going to dump that. Um, I could... Uh, there's almost no chance that I would do anything except cast a mental leak here. So there's no reason to lose some life on this. Let's go and Godless Shrine. Okay, so there's the plateau. All right, I'm just going to close this. I know he's another land drop, but it's not a big deal. Well, I want green. Uh, 
Regrowth be gone, I'm sure. On fixing his hand over there. Very good card. So I actually had more removal in this deck and took some of it out. I'm starting to wonder whether or not that makes any sense at all. And kind of feel like maybe I want to put a little bit more in here. Like I had it before. Need a lot of removal because there's just so many things that are super high threats. Um, the, the increase in power of threats over the years has just gone way up. Uh, there's a good example. Got a flooded strand, so I gotta pay attention. You can play a two mana play here. Hmm. I could improve my hand quite a bit with that. All right, so so he didn't have any mana to actually hit my leak right there, which is pretty nice. So with this little combo, I mean, oh yeah, so you get to see my mana drain, and then I get to scroll rack and fix my hand a little bit here. It's funny because I'm running. Narset, Legacy, Antithe. So in some ways this is kind of a mirror match for me. But anyway, like I was saying, with Skorak, Loam is an insane combo for tons of value normally. With, there's no death right. But it's also just quite good with Iskanta where I can f get rid of cards. Yeah, sure. I can get rid of cards that I don't want. I do have to watch out for cards like Angel and stuff, but there's very little I can actually do about that, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use the scroll rack now. Alright, so I don't want this, or this, or this. I want to see all, all new cards, and then what I'm going to get rid of is not Loam. I'll probably get rid of Yagma's Will. And draw Zern Orb, I mean draw Mana Drain, so in order to do that, so I, so I need to put the card I don't want on top, the card I want underneath, the card I don't want under that, and the card I want under that. So the card I want later is Loam. Um, the card I don't want is... Um, God, I hate to kill either... Well, if I kill a Yog will Excuse me. Uh, if I kill a Yogwill, that's not good. I'm going to kill the Zernorb here. Um, because Zernorb, I can Yogwill back, and you can't exile it with the death rite. So we'll do this. Put this, put this on top. I can always tweak it if I need to with the scroll rack. Pop. Lovely. Why is that in this deck? This makes no sense at all. I feel like I feel like some of his, my opponent's choices, unfortunately, have been what we have is a, what I used to call an inbred metagame. Uh, because what's happened is he's played me so many times, he's like, well, this is good against him. And you just keep doing that until what you have is a deck that it doesn't really have a good... It doesn't really have good value against uh, other decks in the field, but it's really you know, competitive against the, the deck that you intended to be good against, basically. Uh, okay, so, well, it's the same game plan. I mean, I can will it back. We're going to do this. I can grab, so the next card is Loam and then Will. So I can Merchant Scroll for... Um, Hmm. 
One of the things I need to keep in mind too is that this is an oath deck. I don't need to I don't need to get control of this game. I I can just like try to win. And maybe that's the uh, right answer here. Um I kind of want to grab I kind of want to grab the Think about it is I kind of want to grab loam will um that way I have the will for the orb if, if my life total gets pressed down too low. I think I will. I can go ahead and get rid of these. Uh, that changed the amount of time that I have to, yep, sure. I should have used the fetch there, perhaps. So the question is, how much burn does my opponent have? How much value do I need to get out of Will? Um, yeah, if I would have used a fetch land there, I could have potentially willed back the fetch land and at least got a, picked up a land to go with the Zernorb. This is kind of a weird situation for me. Uh, I, I guess I'm going to try a Merchant Scroll here. It means I take two more, cost them some mana to do it, but I, I probably tapped the wrong land there. I'm going to go ahead and get Fire Eyes so that I can get that thing off the board and then I kind of forgot that I could actually do that, <laughs> which is stupid. Anyway, so Fire Eyes, that thing off the board. Yogg will the Zernor about before I died to just random lightning bolts or whatever. It's kind of the thought process here. True name, attempt to counter. Okay, that's gonna charge up a will. Unless this is disruption. I think this is just shaman, okay. Now do I get bolted and die or am I, am I, did we, did we get there? So I could, I could as Kanta, so I could put one, I could put Loam back and then throw the Loam in the graveyard. And then for my draw, I'll mill with Loam. That way I can charge up Yog will And then I have three mana coming. So I get one black for that. I get a red to burn this, a black for that. I actually like this a lot. So let's try this. Okay. 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 Grab the mana. Okay. So, yeah. So, burn this thing off. I don't need that other mana, so let's run out Yogg Will. Get that Cern Orb into play right now. Underground. Suddenly my life feels pretty good. Uh, brainstorm. Okay, okay. Okay, so a card I want to flip with this Kanta is probably good here. So I was going to Merchant Scroll for Horse of Will here. I might have everything I need. Um, I mean, I could put back Strip Mine Loam. Maybe it's too slow. And then tutor up a Horse of Will. But that doesn't actually make me any safer. I've got Counterspell already. So maybe I just put back... I want to I wanna mill off the Strip Mine to the Iskanta. Um... Or mill off the loam and then loam the strip mine. Yeah, that's the way I want to do it. One, two. So with that in mind, I think I'm done. 
this actually worked out really well. I managed to work. So that's the thing about this deck. It's, it's, it's a puzzle. Playing this deck is definitely a puzzle. That has to be worked out. Okay. I'm not quite ready to flip that. Yeah, I want to put that in the graveyard. And then I want to loam the lands. Great. And then I want to clear my attack step. And loam up these guys. Good. Strip mine can attack scrubland or I can start attacking some some blue. I'm I'm worried about red, right? Like ah, green scrub. If I attack scrub, let's see if he sacks this and then that'll inform me about what, what I should target. Uh the other thing is let's see, three blue. I could ponder and then but I think I'm fine. I can also float an ancestral, but I don't need to if I'm running loam I can start Skorak will turn it into an ancestral. Uh, it might be worth it here. Uh, I'm not. It's too dangerous. Let's see if he. Let's see if he fetches. No fetch. All right. Ah, there we go. Fetch during upkeep. So foundry is the Mesa gonna fetch? Okay. Don't get a black. Get, don't get a green. Get, get something that I can cut off. Good. Uh, so what's worse, green or black? Probably black because it, it can be a, a black mana can uh, duress me, right? And I want to protect. I mean, I can protect my cards with scroll rack, but. Okay, let's, yeah, that's it. That is the game. Basically, at this point, I have perfect deck control and tons of card drawing and uh, strip mine recursion. And uh, yeah, going to kill that trop. And then after that, we'll start going after the uh, white mana, probably. Might go after the red. I, I don't know. But at any rate, yeah, that's it. Price of progress. Lots of damage, but didn't get them there because it's not really a price of progress deck. Uh, anyway. All right, so you kind of get the idea what this deck can do. Although, frankly, we're not seeing that much of it. I feel like it's doing very well, but uh, yeah, we're not seeing the full full analysis of what it, what it should be doing. I'm running into the issue where I've just... I feel like you don't quite have enough digging power. But then again, one has been very disruptive over there, and uh, that makes it hard to dig. So, um, what else could I be using? I mean, there's Condescend, there's Serum Visions, there's Thirst for Knowledge, there's uh, so many different cards that offer dig. Uh, that's an insane hand, possibly. I'm playing first. I can Imperial Seal for Oath and then start to die until I find Oath. Or I can play this and say go and hope I draw land, because if I do, I get to Imperial Seal Oath. Um, also with Ren 6. Oh, oops. Oh, shoot. I uh, So here's what I was thinking I was going to do. I was going to go Imperial Seal for a fetch land and then go fetch land Ren and 6. Probably, but I'm not sure because then Ren and Six comes down, then I ping one of the little one ones and it attacks him for one. Yeah, it, I don't know. Anyway, he had 101 cards though, so. Uh... I have to restart that, try again. Yeah, Oath of Nissa is another card that I was looking at earlier as a possible for the stack just to smooth out the first couple of turns here. Okay, that's uh, probably a keep. OK. 
Can't decide if that makes a hand better or worse. Right now, it, it's a little worse because I can't play it. But if I can get some mana, I wonder if this deck just wants even more lands. I mean, I'm starting to feel like, like really, my enemy right now is myself, my biggest enemy. I, I'm, I'm actually want to run a Crows and Virgin here. Should help a good bit, because any hand with Crows and Virgin will be a strong hand to start. But let's see what happens here. Okay. I'm not going to fetch a send step because I really do want to draw another land. Jite. Um, so I don't want to thin myself at all. Perfect. All right, so we'll go get a red, white, it looks like. And if that lives, we're in uh, really good shape. And if it doesn't live, we're in really good shape. So go land Savines and put it right back into play. As long as it's not exiled. I feel like it's going to get exiled. God dog it. That's bad news. It looks like Council's Judgment right there. Nope, just a threat. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, I think we're all set. Seems good. Um, I could flashback Ray or Teachings, no need. Uh, let's go ahead and let that all go away. And go ahead and, if I play Narset, it, it makes it hard for my opponent to, they, they remove this, it depends on what happens. So if I play Narset and they remove the Sphinx and they attack the Narset, it's not that bad because I don't, I can actually re recur it with the Reclamation. And if they're attacking Narset and messing with the Sphinx, and they're not targeting the Oath, then that's not bad. So let's let's do that. Wow, five lands. What? I've had some terrible luck this game. I, I mean, this whole entire recording process has been nothing but bad luck with the, what I think is a good deck. Like, how do I Narset in the deck with zero creatures and still uh, three creatures, one of them in play? 61 other... 61 cards will trigger. And he should have attacked and slammed his guy into this. Well, attempted to kill Narset and then slammed his guy into Sphinx if it doesn't happen, but it looks like Blessing's going on the stack, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Grizzlebrand. That seems pretty good. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think my early game is just a little bit rough right now, and I'm trying to think if there's anything I can do to just smooth that out just a smidge. It, it really could use a little bit of help. Uh, I was thinking about standstill, funny enough, in this deck, even though this is like a deck that's always behind. But if there's a second where I'm not behind and I slam standstill, my opponent kind of has the onus to, to get ahead because I don't... Um, Otherwise, I can eventually wait till I get to library, and I can get colonnade, and I can get my wastelands and stuff. It's pretty good for me, right? So, like, but it's a terrible card if I'm behind at all. Um, very interesting card to me, though. Uh, it's also a, an ancestral. You can tutor with Sterling Grove, which is kind of nice. I kind of want to try it. As crazy as that is. Um, so, if I'm going to play standstill, what am I taking out? Well, thirty-six lands. Feels like it's not enough. If I'm playing standstill, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is dumb, and I shouldn't make that adjustment. It's probably dumb, and I shouldn't make that adjustment. 
Eh. Let's just play. So one of the things that, so what I had before, I think, I had no Bolt and no Deluge. I had uh, Serum Visions and like Thirst for Knowledge. And uh, I guess I'll pay attention to how often. I certainly would have loved a bolt every time that... Oh, there we go. One of the reasons to play this deck. Every time that my opponents played the 1-2. thing about this deck is there's just so many ways to... Um, there's so many ways to uh, draw hands that can just win. Like an early oath. Or an early library. Or an early ancestral, or a tax rack, or a loam, almost anything, strip mine, whatever, ren strip, early okos can beat a lot of players. Like there's so many just um, hands that just do this and threaten to win. And while typical control might, might struggle against an aggressive deck where, you know, because library library's a bit slow and everything, but um, I mean, this deck is running Oath of Druids, so um, I'm going to run Windswept Heath out, and I'm probably just going to discard. I could preordain. I think I will preordain, actually. I'm going to get blue-green, though. Um... I'll run, I'll take the bolt and the misdirection as well and throw away a, um, what do I throw away here? I mean, I know there's a bolt on top, so I could throw away plowshares. Don't really like that. I actually can throw away factor fiction, but I need a card to misdirection with. I could throw away basic island, but I kind of want to get... Narset down. I throw away Krakus, but I need it for swords. And it's white for Sterling Grove. So all around, I guess I throw a plow. And then I just replace it with the bolt on top. And at this point in the game, bolt will be fine. Geist. Okay. Hexproof, legendary, so I can't Caracas that thing. Um, right? Right. Okay, so that gives me the ability to fetch an oath and hopefully force it into play with the misdirect. Geist is one of those cards that it is one of the ways that I can lose because it's just too much damage too quickly. Okay, that's a lot of damage. So I tap to draw and then sack for oath, play the oath and get the bolt down so that I can bolt the 3-2. Uh, the I, I might be all right. Because one attacks for 10 there. Tap to draw. Grove. Go get with the druids. I could get mode, but it's a little bit slow. Play land, play the oath. And then my opponent should attack for 10 here, I think. And then I bolt the uh, tar pit, and then I'm okay. That's the, that's the plan. I might still die to Geist. Actually, um, which is kind of gnarly. Huh. Change his, change his plan. 
Yeah, I think I think you just go for lethal, right? You've got lethal. I can't imagine, like, what would you play over that? And tech for six here is going to hurt, but... So I'm really hoping to hit the angel. All right, so put that on the stack. Let's bolt this. Take six. I don't want to hit, I really want to hit the angel because the angel is like guaranteed safety here. Oh, Grizzlebrand's good. All right. Don't need to worry about that. But it might not be good enough. So I can... <sighs> I guess I can library. Uh, and then either, so the options are land factor fiction, or I can counsel and dig four cards deep. Try to find, what am I trying to find here? Um, I mean, the plan is he's going to block the four, four. Well, I would like to find, the card I want to find is uh, uh, Zernor. So the question is, do I go land? So, I mean, I definitely play, well, I definitely play land. All right, so the question here is, do I counsel Narset? Fact, Narset could just, hmm. presumably, if my opponent has Path to Exile, I'm, I'm totally hosed here unless I factor fiction into like a force of will. But if they have um, not Path to Exile, if they have um, Source of Pleasures, I don't, I don't care at all. That buys me time and then I can Oath. I don't need Grizzlebrand. I mean, if they had Path to Exile, I could bounce this like to protect it and keep it in the game, except then I just die. So this is the one card I, well, I don't know. So with all that in mind, it's a huge question mark here because I don't have a second target for Path to Exile that I can misdirect to. So I could dig for, like, Worldly Council could try to dig me, like, a, a Mana Leak or something. Um, mana Leak wouldn't really do it, though. Uh, and I don't think I have any other two-mana counters that would. So, except maybe Evasive Action. So I could try to dig into an Evasive Action. Um... Or I just, uh, or just playing Narset here so that my opponent can't go brainstorm, ponder, you know, ponder effects, trying to find their way towards a solution. And I get to dig almost as far. So I think the correct answer is play Narset, try to keep my opponent from pondering their way into a solution here. Uh, see if I can, well, balance is pretty good. So if my opponent does have Source Supply Shares, it gives me balance. Uh, if it was earlier in the game, I'd like that a little bit more. Uh, Chase is pretty good. Sea Beyond is good. Basically, this turn, I think, is the turn. So I'll probably just take the Chase here, because I don't think that there's much chance that I can live here if my opponent has something. So... If they don't have something, then I might as well take the card that helps me win the game a little bit easier. Balance doesn't do it. Okay, let's see what they got. Pretty darn good thing that I uh, selected Narset here. Uh, so we'll do it with um, Cestral. It's pretty slow. Wow, so if I hadn't played Narset right there, I wouldn't have anything to misdirect that to. That is fabulous. Well, it can't swing if they do. Um, I mean, they can, but then I gain seven life and lose two and win the game. 
amazing. Whew. Gosh darn, man. These games are super close. Um, okay. You know, because this deck almost feels combo-y, I wonder if it just wants cards like Duress and Friends. Because it's very combo-esque, right? Like, we want to Duress and then play Oath. Um... Man, I've been lucky with the uh, decision-making process here. Fortunately, um, you yeah, have no edict in here for that guy. I've got Pernicious Deed and Toxic Daily should both kill him. I used to have edict. Mode is too slow most of the time. I also used to run Engineer Explosives and Nevenerals Disc. Disc is a little bit too slow also. EE is probably too slow because three mana to play it. Repeal... I used to play as well, which is pretty good because you can protect an oath with it. Repeal certainly would have worked on um, a lot of uh, on the token just to buy the turn that I need to stay in the game. Pretty interesting. Um, man, I'm still like super pleased with how that worked out. That was that was difficult. Yeah, I also have Council's Judgment. I have answers for that guy. Just not seeing them. Um, of course, I could take out Council's Judgment if I'd rather and just run um, Idyllic Tutor. It's another Oath Tutor. And I mean, Oath Tutors are pretty good. So also Moat. Council's Judgment's strong. And I fear it quite often, especially with Angel in play. Like one of the few ways to kill it pretty easily forever right so that i can't oath it but um <laughs> i don't know but how much does this deck want that card versus just running another way to go get oaths because oath is pretty doggone important as you've seen I'm, i may actually make that swap out um i have to mulligan once again uh, so what do I get rid of here? I need to put something on the bottom of my library. Um, missing, this is going to get blue, green, and brainstorm and try to find the red, and then from there I can start recurring. So I guess I'll just get rid of the land, and plus I need the brainstorm if I have to uh, misdirect. Still, if I'd have kept that land, then if I hit the third land, I could Sphine's Reclamation land into play and still be all right. So I don't like this. But it was the right card, unfortunately. All right, so there's a much better card for me to misdirect with if I have to. Like, for example, if, if I get hemmed here or if my opponent plays Ancestral Recall, which is also in the format. Yeah, and it's a card that I can possibly, I can tap mana and try to get a Ren and Six to stick, Ren and Sticks to the board. Um, I'm tempted to uh, brainstorm right now because I think that's right. Because if I if I brainstorm right now and I hit, uh, then I'm able to uh, get the ren down and and I'm in so much better shape. Like this is going for the win. You know, or I could do that. All right, let's. Uh, Let's dump both of these. Play this guy and pass. Um, actually, I don't really want to fight over, over Blessing. So I might just try to le legacy the Blessing away right now. It's a little bit of a risk here, but oh, it's got something. I guess I could have said done and waited for my opponent's sack the delta and then cast the legacy in response. So this this was a misplay. 
Okay, no punish, looks like. Good. So we'll get the blessing shuffled into the deck where it belongs. I get a shuffle, so I don't get to see those top two cards. Beautiful. Sure would have been nice to find a uh, mana source, but, uh, you know, still. I guess things are okay. So hopefully it's a creature <laughs> that's not um, true name. Okay. Well, that's not good. I can get to... Uh, well, I need to draw a land. This, I think I hear myself say that pretty much every game. I think I need to add more mana sources or more cantrips to the stack. This is... This is getting real frustrating. Ugh. All right, so land swings the other land into play. I'm gonna just throw away a tithe, so definitely not feeling bad about this situation. Days, I could. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna misdirect that. I just have to draw mana. I mean, in a couple of turns, I could possibly flesh it back and have multiple targets. It's not bad. Hey, like Chuck. I can't. I don't think I can misdirect that to my opponent. Uh, because this target opponent reveals their hand. So. All right. So the mystical, or the, I don't have a mystical tutor, a merchant scroll, never mind. There is actually no mystical tutor in here. Hmm. Uh, but what I can do is a merchant scroll for mystical teachings. And then teachings for um, uh, Vampiric Tutor or Enlightened Tutor. And that's a way to go get Oath. And it's possible that I should drop the Merchant Scroll and just replace it with um, one of the uh, Delve cards. Because Scroll's nice, but I mean, the Delve cards are really powerful. All right, so I'll go get Force of Will, of course. So now hopefully my opponent feels good about playing a creature, um, even though they know I have plowshares and everything. Maybe they'll try to get the plow out of my hand. I mean, I'm not going to, like, they want me to plow a creature so that their tar pit can start beating me up. Yeah, exactly. And what's interesting about this is that if I enlighten tutor and my opponent for oath and my opponent like say they want to plow their guy in order to stop the oath well then they don't get a choice it's create a one one it's not you may create so this is actually kind of nice for me let's go get oath
And then I just have to hope that I don't die to Dak Faden, because Dak Faden's ultimate and then like a fire ice or something would be pretty brutal. But at least with Caracas, so if I get an angel, it can't be targeted. If I get um, the Sphinx, I can plow it. And if I get, yep, here it comes. And if I get uh, Grizzlebrand, well, I can bounce it with the Caracas after drawing my cards. So, oh, targeting your guy. Yeah, see, it's not going to work. Card is a huge liability right there. Glad to see Dak Faden go, though. Can't take a Sphinx anyway, but still. Don't like to see it in play. Don't want the card quality, the selection over over there happening. Amazing how fast the game can change. But that's Oath for you. All right, so let's see what we get here. Big Papa. Nice. Okay, I'll just grab some cards. And bounce him. Okay, of course I want to discard him. I also want to um, get things going with, uh, let's see, I've got Helix, but I want that creature in play. So at this point, I could, let's make sure I can play a um, Mana Drain. All right, so I can dump some lands here pretty safely, I think. I'll jump Grizz, land, land. Uh, I probably don't need land. And I guess I could throw away Abrupt Decay. Uh, I probably don't need Plowshares. If I throw this away, it might in cause my opponent to think, hey, I should attack with my Creeping Tar Pit. And I would love that. So we'll do it that way. Okay, opponent has stumped their hand in order to keep the oath from killing them, and uh, I am good with that. So now we just play factor fiction games and should be in good shape. I can probably ice. Yeah, I just want to dig, right? So let's go ahead and just ice this. There we go. I should have held it. Oh, well. So if I impulse, I need to hit blue. Or I can just go get green, red. Yeah, so I want to get red down, pick up red, do red and six. Um, I've got four, so well. opponent has an empty hand, so I'm fine tapping out here. So we'll do run in six, and we'll plus up run in six, and go get Grove of the Burn Willows, and get that into play. And then from there, um, I think we're all set. Just got to watch out because of Dak Faden's ability. But in most cases, like, you know, if it's an abrupt decay or something, it's not going to really, it's not going to really do too much. Right, so Renin 6 will get me another land. Moat is very good. Let's go get Breeding Pool, Misty, Bayou, Steam Vents. They'll deal damage to me, darn it. Uh, but I want black and I want blue, so we'll get this one.
Um, so I can Sphinx, but I'll do that in a minute. What I want to do is protect my Planeswalker. Um, the question is, do I want to play the moat and then... Yeah, I guess it's all right. Let's just play the moat. Uh, we'll play the moat this way because then I can... I still have two mana for Punishing Fire. Okay. And then Sphinx uh, Reclamation can get two permanents. It costs three or less. So I can go get Crucible Scroll Rack. No, Oko Scroll. No, Narset Oko. Yeah, that seems pretty good. All right, opponent concedes. But yeah, I'm going to go get Oko Narset here. Flash shows back from the graveyard. Um, and then I think we're, we're there. Opponent gives up. Okay. Yeah, I'm not needing Council's Judgment, but I am needing Oath a lot. Let's put Idyllic Tutor in. Oh, I know the other card that I should be using. I just realized. Oath Trigger. And it's a way to deal with... Um, let's see if I have it, first of all. Elephant, Elephant. No, not those elephants. Just got a foil bot. Uh, um, it's another way to deal with certain planeswalkers that I might be willing to kill and give my opponent something. All right, so elephant. I don't remember what the heck this card is called, but I do know what it does. And it is... Uh, I think it's an elephant. Shoot. Um, okay. Maybe it's not an elephant. Uh, maybe my opponent doesn't have one. Let's see here. Instant, instant, instant. Beast within. Yeah, that's what it was. Is this? Is this? Oh, it's a beast. It is called Beast Within, after all. Let's see if I've got... I don't have enough tickets for that. Do I have Beast Within? I don't have one. Ah. And it's like, I can sell cards to get cards, but if I do that, I'm... Uh, shoot. Shoot, I really want to try this card out. But if I sell cards to get cards, then I'm just ending... I'm, I get in this endless loop of... Uh, of declining value, right? Because my cards are worth less when I sell them. Let's see if I, I'll see if I have anything that like this bot will want to purchase. Somehow I doubt it. No, nope. I've got nothing to sell. Um, unless I sell cards that I'll need later and then that's just foolish. Shoot, so I want Beast Within. Beast Within's a great way to trigger out. That's also really good with like pernicious deed effects that you where you just don't care that much. Um, what a great card. I would really like that card in here. Um, it's custom made for Oath, I swear. Right, that's what it feels like. Um, and it's, you know, Vindicate on in, in, at instant speed, a super flexible card. Need to... Need to put that in here. Um, and then, of course, every once in a great while, you do something crazy like you uh, beast within your own side of the board and uh, attack their planeswalker. Like, let's say the opponent gets Narset down, they tap out for Narset. Like, you go land your third land, and they go third land Narset, and then they impulse, and you like go beast within on your land, create a 3-3. Three, three. And then in the next turn, play a land and attack Narset and kill it. And now you've got board position. Um, so I need a Beast Within. I just don't have... Let's see what's going on here.
All right. So I'm not sure what's going on right now. Waiting to see. One of the things that the stack would run in the past and that I kind of feel is a mistake not to play is Cephalid Coliseum. Besides the interaction with Narset, Coliseum also has an amazing interaction with Lelm. But finally, midway through the game, there's plenty of occasions where you don't want cards, certain cards in your deck. Like, you know, your hand is like, you know, Angel, Grudge, uh, something like, you know, Angel, Grudge, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? Some land, uh, scrub land or whatever, and then you draw Colosseum and suddenly you get real cards. So I feel like... That is an oversight, not playing it in here. So that is one thing that could give me some deck selection without really taking up much of a slot. Maybe it's better than Mystic Sanctuary, although Sanctuary is very, very good in an Oath deck, right? Ugh. These basic lands are killing me. Uh, this isn't a keepable hand, maybe, but with Sea Beyond, it could be. Going second, like, ugh. Okay, well, maybe that mulligan was okay. All right, so and here he's too early. Grudges sometimes good early. It's hard to say. And here it can be so good mid to late, though. I think I think I'll dump the grudge anyway. I I have a way to get. All right, so I'm going second, so I want to go turn one library, hope that it doesn't die. Turn two, I get on library plan, and then I've got sorts of plushers for anything except two scary threats, the two that I can't target, right? All right, here we go. I drew a land there too, so that goes really well with the um, library if I I'm able to get up to the loam, like if my opponent does strip mine it, so. All right. Infinite power in a land. Okay, we are off to the races now, folks. Got a balance to deal with um, untargetable, which is real nice. It'll hurt me on the cards in hand count, but then loam will help. And then I've got so the reason I tucked uh, Grudge over something else was uh, Sea Beyond's just too flexible, especially with Loam. I can see Beyond lands, but Nahiri Loam is also a combo where you can discard lands and then dredge the Loam if you want. And so you end up drawing quite a few cards. Huh. All right. P fire is very good there. So I'll go this route and be done. Feeling pretty decent here. I just want early defense. I do kind of miss the ancient grudge, but here you can kill most artifacts that my opponent might play. No, that's not true. It, it can deal with um, crucible uh, because it never taps. True name, scary. Don't want to have to balance. Might have to balance. Really don't want to have to. Hmm. So it's a worse thing though. All right, so I need blue, white. Blue, black. I think it's all my colors, and I've got red, green, and then I've got another blue there. Oh, yeah, deed. Deed is good. Gets a force. Well, that's 
not great. I could tap to draw and hope that I find a force of will or a, a balance effect. I might just not worry too much about that because I really want to find Oath. Okay. Opponent forces with click. Yeah, that's not too bad for me. It does reduce their pressure a bit. So click would have been a good disruptive card to deal with my balance. I mean, if I have to balance, I have to balance, but I've got a little time and I, I really just want to find, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that this deck can do to deal with three damage per turn. So. Oop, we're still in combat. Ah, uh, found a solution. Well, sort of. I got the loan. All right, so I can get Nahiri down to soak up some beats. Um, and also because... So I'm stuck with the C beyond in my hand. One has a counter, this probably draws it out. Because I may have to balance, mind twist myself, and then rebuild my hand with Loam Library. Um, probably won't be that bad. So what am I gonna take two damage here? No, it's just countered, okay. It would have been a nice card to have him play to go with the balance, so. All right. Okay, this is getting a little bit bad. One card in hand. So what is the last card in hand? I mean, one card in hand. This is a pretty good spot for me. Like, I still have a ton of time here. Let's loam one, two, three. Okay. So I can play library and then just I can afford to take more damage. I want to get I want to get moat going. Stifle? Mind sensor. Okay, well, I guess my decision is made then. I'm going to try to balance. Um, I can p-fire that away. So um I have to throw away or plow it. Oh uh, no, punishing fire it and then balance is the way to go. So I guess I throw away. <sighs> Grudge. Uh, I could have thrown away fire, but I just don't have the time to use it. <sighs> this is getting real gnarly. I've waited too long. No, I'm not going to loan. Hmm. Okay, does it stick? Do I die? I 
All right, so a card in my hand to keep. The best card in my hand to keep is either Swords to Plowshares against this deck, which is trying to kill me. But I do have Punishing Fire. And if it's bigger than that, eh, I don't know. Um, or uh, Worldly Council, which I can dig for three. Or I could keep, like, Remand. Um, Remand's not great. It can buy me some time. Council's better. Uh, but maybe I do keep Remand. So what I want to do is I want to loam, right? I want to loam my way up to Library again. So Remand or Plowshares? Um, I'm going to keep the Plow. I'm, I'm so low on life that... Uh, I don't know if this is right or not, but I mean, I'm so low on life that... I can imagine my opponent flashing out the 3-4 Angel right here and then... You know, I take three and then plow in order to get back in the game, maybe. So, I do get to go get strip mine here. Okay, there. I mean, I can grow that off. So, um, all right. So, if I want to loam, I use loam with uh, expedition map. Well, anyway, I'm going to loam for sure. As long as I don't have a guy's blessing, right? So I can go get strip mine, strip the scrub land, strip mine, play it. How do I want to do this? Because I really want a punishing fire and save my plow if I can save it. I think what I want is a taiga. But the problem is I want strip mine too because I, I want to get into I want to get into like making a play that can potentially win the game here. So um, the other option I suppose is I could get Mystic Sanctuary. So Mystic Sanctuary would let me recur uh, any of these cards if I want to. I guess I can save that for later. So strip mine is the answer. It's got to be Strip. I'm going to have to burn a plow. Hope that the next card doesn't save my opponent. Go for the Strip and then rebuild my hand with Loam. Um, in a moment. Um, okay. And then go for Strip Mine and then attack their black and white. So I can take out a color here. And then uh, hopefully we'll take out the black next. Problem, of course, is that <laughs> red is the color I'm afraid of at five life. I guess I'll get Basic Island here. Now I'll go get Hallowed Fountain. Okay, building up for library. And in the meantime, I've got something I can do. It's nice that the uh, click is gone once again. Very nice because uh... all right, no blessing. Good. Strip mine, basic island. I'll get the forbidden orchard out of the graveyard so that I have it if I can find an oath. Seven cards in hand, so I want to play... My opponent has Snapcaster here. I would regret not having red in play, but... I want to strip... I want to continue with the strip pressure on their mana base.
All right, no end to turn effects, so we'll go after this. So if they've got something like cycling um, or a stifle, a three mana stifle, and we'll stop it there. I do have ancient grudge here. I got to keep that in mind in case my opponent plays an artifact. I'm worried about price of progress, so very nice. Yeah. So next three cards we're going to mill off were those. And I was just going to strip again and then mill these off, strip again. Probably stop and then go into library mode. Not too bad, not too bad. So I said I wanted Idyllic Tutor, but look at that game where I'm desperate to like clean that creature off the board. Man, I feel like I need Engineered Explosives. Um, this deck just hasn't got enough permanence to care and really wants the ability to control exactly where it's blowing things up. Because, I mean, if I have Oath, I'll just, I'm not going to blow it on two. So if I'm going to run Explosives, uh, what comes out? It's probably, is there anything I've drawn that I've been super happy about? I've been pretty pleased with most of my cards. Nahiri and everything. Ice has been good. All this has been good. Um... This action is a little bit weaker since I added all the basic lands in here. Um, I could cut a land, but I've been struggling for land all game, so I don't think so. Sea Beyond was so-so. Uh, but early on, it's a pretty nice card to have. It fixes these, drawing these too early. Um, so, I mean, Regrowth was okay. Brock Decay is good. Helix is good. Um, looking at two drops, really. It could be evasive action. Ancestral Vision's also kind of slow. I don't think this deck needs it. I really don't. I love drawing it early, but I just don't think... I'm going to do that. It's it's a hell of a card with balance, too. But man, I just I need to interact with the board. I, I'm going to win the long game. The loam game is all you need. Library of Alexandria, loam, all that good stuff. That's all you need to win. There we go. Another possibly game-winning hand. I freaking love library. All right, so best one point I ever spent. So, mm, this card makes you want to go second so much. And what's funny is Oath also rewards you for going second. Hmm. Why did he pay the life? I'm thinking that means either Tyler Vampiric Tutor. No, he's got a discard spell. I said Death Right. Okay. Okay, we're in business then. Very much in business. Could be an argument made for not even playing a land and just passing and then using this, but um, I don't like in order to be able to force or uh, misdirect something without getting off of library. But I don't really like that because um, I still want to hit land drops. I mean, it puts me two turns behind if I do that. Colors that we get red, white, and blue, white. Okay, so he's got a plateau. I could counsel and dig for two, but it doesn't seem too great to me, so. Actually, I think I'm just going to throw away Vampiric Tutor here. I, I could also throw away Ray. I haven't really seen any targets for Ray over there. I think that's fine. I've got Force of Negation for an enchantment that I might care about. So, if it wants to spend the time nuking my ray, I'm probably all right with that. It might be better for me if my opponent's using their time like that. Um, Jace, let's draw a card. Yeah, you got a Jace. I really need to draw some land here. 
or have a way that I can use one of my tutors. Okay, so he's going to death, right? That's cool. Oh, well, if you're going to draw a land, I guess. All right, let's clear the attack step out. Yeah, I'm going to pay. This is the equivalent of drawing a card. Yep. That is a well-protected oath. I like, I like the day's play there because it, it took me off library. So, cost me a card and... Uh, choices. Seems pretty good anyway. All right, so. Man, how good is this deck? It was pretty good. Vindicate? Maybe vindicate. Beautiful. All right. So why don't you uh, vindicate something different? Uh, chase or death right? I can I can deal with chase with the um. I can deal with chase with the uh, my creatures can just attack and kill it most likely. So on the other hand, a flip chase will be able to vindicate. So now let's let's take out the chase. Of course, I have Sveens if, if it all went, if it all went super wrong. So I could just Vampiric here and go get Grizzlebrand, and that's not too shabby at all, but I can sit on Forbid if I don't hit Grizzlebrand, and I can eventually Grizzlebrand, so I think I'd rather just not waste a Vampiric. Okay, yeah, Archangel's fine. And I would be willing to, how would I? Do I want to play a forest here? Um, probably, yeah. And then do I want to play Sveens? Um, I don't think so. I want to save that for Oath, so. Got my questions answered. I'm sure Deathrite might like to kill that Yogwell. Yeah. Yeah, the nice thing about the Angel, besides all the other benefits, is that so my opponent here wants to try to race me by going face. I just ignore it, and the damage gets redirected to the Angel anyway, so they can't really go face. And with the Orchard, it's just not going to happen. Okay, uh, good. Okay, so far so good. Deck's been doing very well, other than changing out the explosives and the idyllic tutor. I haven't really done too much different with this deck. Um, I had a daze in here and I miss having it. Free counters are money in this deck, but 
Ah, what do I do? I guess I keep this because, uh, yeah, I keep this. You know why? Because depending on what my opponent does, I can just vampiric tutor and go get library and possibly just win that way. Especially with that draw. So I think that is the play. And then if my opponent does like an early creature, then I go get Oath. So if they make no play, I get Library. If they make a play, I get Oath. Um, and then otherwise, I've got them on a Counterspell my Vampiric Tutor game plan, which is pretty, pretty good for me. So... Yeah. All right, nice follow-up possible with Oko. Um, or I can, or if they can, I mean, if they kill it, then of course I just get to land and do like ice into ponder kind of digging and then sphinx it back into play. This card is so good. Man, I can't remember who, who it was that suggested it, somebody on the channel, but my goodness, what a card. Like, I, I had no idea this card existed. This is like one of the best white cards around in the game. Okay, there we go. Um, so I kind of want to play the Badlands, but I think I'm fine here. I kind of want to play the Badlands because my opponent does uh, end of turn like um, the three one flyer, but I think this is all right because if they don't do anything, then I get the ice. Cool. So that's one less. By taking that away, if my opponent draws Vindicate here, they may not have the second black that they need to be able to go land Vindicate. And so, you know, it buys me some time. Um, it also keeps them off like a Mind Twist effect or something along those lines. Okay, so I could run out I do need to get another blue out, so let's just do that. I want to get Oko, but I'm on library plan, so we're going to go with library activation, model the mixture, and uh, world at council. And then try to Oko my way back into uh, fixing that life total there. So library and step. And then take a little look at four cards, I think. It's fine. I, I could play the Badlands and go five deep, but this is totally acceptable. Uh, actually, Zernorb looks real good. I could take Preordain, but I, I think Zernorb is just fine here. I, I want to uh, ensure that I'm, I'm winning with cards, so I want to ensure that I don't lose with life. 
Oh, that's nice because that'll go get a wasteland when I need one. Um, so I could play Zernor, but I mean it, it slightly risks the card. Um, I could run out top, which I like actually. Top's pretty good. Um, I should have played it off the Badlands probably. The Badlands represents like I have more to do, but um, all right, so I'm done. I'm, I don't want to. I could play Zer I could draw and then play Zernor, but then if I have to counter and I lose a fight, I it puts me in a worse spot. So V click. Um, I could. Yeah. So I was I was a little concerned about click. I'm not going to library in response. I'm not going to top in response. Basically, I'm going to let the card happen. It digs me one deeper into my library. I'll li I'll use the library, so that'll dig me another card deeper. And then I'll use top. And so that gives me like five five looks at a solution for Vendillion Click. And uh, mean meanwhile, I have Wargate to go get Oath or Zern Orb or, you know, I've got a lot of... Like, they're going to take one card, probably Oko. Hard to say. Maybe they'll take the muddle. Depends on what the what, what he's trying to push here. Um, but if I wargate for zero, I can wargate for Caracas. And although a bouncing Vendillion click is annoying, it's not like it costs my opponent three mana to make me tap one. And cycling through my cards is okay. Yeah. So there we go. That's fine. Yeah. Let's just draw. Take that out right now before my opponent gets a Caracas. So what I lose, I lost Elko. Okay. What I want is just hit me with the colonnade. You know, that's that's like the perfect situation for me or like play something that uh i can oath into that's not too scary that's that's not the greatest thing uh, but i do have answers okay so i want to draw a vindicate i want to vindicate i want to draw a land also so i will do it this way I can actually get all three cards next turn, so I guess one, two, three. If my opponent wants to plus Jace, then um, I assume they're going to zero out the Jace. Okay, yeah. So draw a land, tap, draw the... Um, Merchant Scroll and uh, Tutor. I mean, tap the top and get the um, Vindicate. That's probably good. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, draw a card. Grab that. Draw a card. Grab that. Clear my attack step. Vindicate that thing. Let's go get a uh, Tundra. For her, for her to get a blue red here, but I don't have the option, so yeah, I want a second white for moat. All that thing, kill it, be done. Still on library. I 
One could just twist me for six here if they're running it. Should be super brutal. Okay, Geist. So it's Oath time, maybe. Of course, another play here is like Geist Armageddon. There's there's a lot of nasty stuff that could happen right here. Um, I also have m Moat, so. Uh, so I want to get Force of Will. Alright, so if I if I tutor for a counter spell, put it in my I'll tutor for a counter spell, I just get it. Imperial seal, tap to draw. It'd have to be force of will, but I mean I could do it that way. Um or tutor for force, tap to draw, cast oath or moat rather. Or I can just attempt to cast, to put an Oath into play with uh, Wargate. I really want a counter in my hand. Um, I really want to force a will in my hand, so I'm going to do this. I can't do the moat play here. I'm just going to brainstorm. Mind sensor, very, very annoying card. Okay. And I tapped wrong, so now I can't moat. That's lovely. At least yet. I can Imperial Seal for one of my top war cards. I can Wargate. No, I could Savines an extra land into play. Just uh, assist me with my patchy mana situation. I can play Narset. Ponder is also a good card. I guess I'll Ponder. Okay, Force of Will makes me happy. Um, I definitely don't want a fetch card. F some kind of Force of Will effect. Um, so, on the top of my library, I've got um, cards that I don't want. Well, I've got a Colonnade and then some stuff I don't want. Um, So let's get rid of them. I don't mind if Narset dies here. It's better Narset than me. Balance. Thank you. All right, so I fear an Armageddon effect, but otherwise I'm feeling pretty good. I don't want my opponent to just tap out and mind twist me. Or bolt that in our set. Yeah, that's pretty good. Player or Planeswalker. I, I could redirect it to my opponent, but that's silly. I'm going to balance these off and protect it with Misdirection. I, if that was Lightning Bolt, I might have misdirected it to the Aven Mind Sensor, but because I think my opponent would have, uh, if they had a counter, they would have fought over it. But this is fine. Balance with the um, library, it's it's doesn't make me happy. But my opponent can also Caracas a case back to their hand, but uh, I can kill all their lands if I want to, possibly. So main thing is I get to get the mind sensor off the board. Um, target opponent reveals. I can't retarget. That thing is so annoying. <laughs> that thing is so annoying. <laughs> Okay, I assume that they take uh, balance, yeah. And then 
that's okay because now I can moat. I can get library mode, I can get the mode out. I still have the mind sensor to deal with. I take a lot of damage here. Um, but it's gonna slow down. I mean, they can tap out for their colonnade to make it six there, but. Ha! That's hilarious, okay. So one, two, three, four. Let's get the moat down so I don't die. Uh, do I want to go land oath, or do I want to hold the land for? Um, library. I can get more cards in my hand, so I think I just want to play the land. Uh, if I have to misdirect here, I'm going to go under library anyway, so. So my opponent can bounce guys to their hand, but they can't get rid of the mind sensor with the uh, Caracas. All right, so I'm going to go to two and then I want to swing that uh, Narset into play quite a bit. Hopefully I don't reshuffle here. Not ready for that yet. Sphinx is very nice. I could also get the orchard into play with the Sphinx because I would like to oath again. Um, but I mean, I think Narset pins my opponent down pretty, pretty well. And it puts an extra card in my hand, you know, it replaces itself. One, two, three. Um, I don't know how they win if I have just like Sphinx sitting out here with a Narset. So I think that's the most sensible. Oko is the other option. If I play Oko, I can actually feed him creatures here. It might be even better. Feed them creatures, I can gain life, I can turn off that stupid Aven Mind Sensor and make it a 3-3 three, three who can't attack. I like that, actually. Now I can search. All right, do I have both Strip Mine and Wasteland in the graveyard? I don't, so... So I could go green, white, blue, Wargate for zero, strip mine this thing right off the board, or the Caracas. It, I actually rather just sit on the um, I'd rather sit on the um, Mana Leak and save Wargate for misdirection, so. Alright, cool. So now they got a couple of cards. I mean, he can bounce his Geist, but I'm going to make food. I mean, he's got to, you know, use the Colonnade and then slam it into my guy. It just dies and doesn't do anything, so. Yeah, I need that Elephant Maker. Ugh. Two dollars holding me back with this deck, you know? It's funny. That's an interesting keep. Uh, so what goes to the bottom? Because I want everything. I can probably tuck the explosives, but if I tuck the explosives and my opponent addresses balance, I don't even have a game plan, right? Whereas if I tuck the island and I can manage to find an island or any land, then I've got Crucible. Ugh. Uh, 
Uh, explosive balance is pretty good. I could dump the Jace. It's all really good. I think this is right because chances are I find a land, and you know, if I don't, I guess balance is a little bit better when you're mana screwed anyway, but. I mean, chances are I find a land, right? I find a land, a counter spell, a dig card, something that goes and helps me get to that third mana before it's too late here. Yeah, and this was the other reason I kept the explosives. If my opponent takes the balance, which he's going to take the balance, at least I have a way to deal with permanence still in my hand. Look, I need a density against cards like this, a density of defense. A defensity. <laughs> he's texting me. Um, what's going on here? Hmm. I thought this was an easy choice here. It's, it's just take balance, right? Like you can't, you can't let me go. You can't take another card out of my hand and then let me go land, balance, take you down to like three cards. Well, I suppose I wouldn't do that right away, but I don't know. Maybe um, maybe it doesn't seem as obvious, especially if you're not used to playing with balance, or maybe he has a game plan for balance down the road where he's going to um, make me discard or counter it. So maybe he wants to take like Crucible or Jace in order to um, in order to give me the, the, the payout cards, you know, because maybe... Maybe in the beginning of the game we fight over balance and then we, we have a back and forth over it. But if I result, I stick a Jace, well then, you know, it's probably game over. So, yeah. The correct card is balance, but I mean, I could see what the thinking could have been, maybe. All right. Yeah, this is pretty terrible for me here. I, I, I could play explosives on two, but I have no idea of knowing if that is really going to be good or bad for me to do that if he goes like dark confidant or something here it's it's a little bit worse but mm. that's brutal all right well it looks like i might lose this one there's a good chance of it We'll see, though. I don't know. A land here could change everything. A lot of cards could. Okay. Yeah. Blue, black, green, white is what we're looking at here. One has no blue mana. Hopefully this sticks and doesn't die. If it does, well, next turn. Land from Graveyard Jace looks real tasty. If my opponent has like a three drop here that I've got to deal with, well, it's problematic because of the explosives and crucible interaction, unfortunately, but... Mm. Oh God. Okay, well, explosives on three then. God, that's miserable. Uh, 
This is a very resilient deck, but this start is bad news. Assume it's going to be the Savannah, but maybe, yeah. Take out two colors with a single strip mine effect. Plus this up. Kill this, win game. I'll, I'll concede, I assume. I'll concede. I, I, I could draw, like, Ancient Grudge, I guess, off the top. But... Okay, the rest is my Legacy or Jace. They're both good. Oh, Legacy lets me do something with the Angel. Turn into real cards, possibly. And Jace lets me do something with the Angel. So. Probably got to take the Jace, but it's not that. I mean, I'm still in this game now. God, that's such a savage start. Okay. I mean, I have to pop this now. Sphinx could let me get the Crucible back, and then, then I could be back in the game, um, possibly. Okay. I would very much like land. Okay, or force a will. That's perfectly good. Force makes using this combo here a little bit tricky. Uh, simply because I, I probably could have gone for it on my turn. Um, but yeah, I, I might actually have to force a will with the angel. Um, so I think what I do, I try to I try to the legacy, and my opponent may want to like fight over it. He might want to counter the legacy to sort of screw me by forcing me to hold the angel, which actually ends up working in my favor a little bit. Because um, then this is like a duress for a counter spell that my opponent pays for. And then if he doesn't make that play, well, then it's perfectly fine. I I do plug the angel back in and hope that um, it all works out. Okay. Oh, awesome. Got a Force of Will and a Strix. So fantastic for me right there. So I actually have a way back in this game. P Fire, very, very nice. I can kill the Snap Caster here. Yeah, I might be able to get back in this game. Okay, I mean, I could take some colonnade beats, but I mean, if I can get, I need a source of white. There's nothing I'm force of willing that costs one white or one blue, except for ancestral recall, perhaps, I suppose. That's probably a reason I shouldn't have yielded, but I mean, come on. Okay, maybe. Trying to crawl my way back into this game somehow. The deck is being somewhat nice to me, but somewhat not. So if my opponent makes a play here that isn't to activate Colonnade, it's almost, I mean, it's a free turn for me in some ways. It buys me some time. Make my angel useful. Give me a chance to possibly stay in the game. Save me four damage also. <laughs> Pretty big. Ooh, ponder before casting a spell you want to resolve is a little bit better than ponder after. I suppose his information now, but... Oh, I see why he did it. He wanted to regrow the snapcaster and then play the snapcast... Well, I don't know. I don't know there. Anyway, I actually don't really care about protecting scroll rack, but I can't afford to have another snapcaster going, you know, with another K command. That that whole business is not going to work for me, so I have to try. I had to try there. Um, I 
Okay, I don't want either of these cards, so. And I'm probably toast. I'm going to draw a card. I can play Merchant Scroll to shuffle, which means I don't have a blue card for the Force of Negation on top of my deck. Yeah. All right. Did that just save me four life? It did. That is so good for me. Okay, so it's Sphines, and I don't. The other card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it this way because if if I do it the if I do it this way and my opponent draws a um, if they have some sort of life gain here, I want to be able to pick up Punishing Fire. So this is another card I can score rock with. I mean, I feel like my deck is not really cooperating too well with me right now. Uh, this is, like, painful. Painful. It's the agony. Just nothing. Opponent doing what they should be doing. I would be dead. This game would be over now if, if my opponent had focused on colonating me. Uh, but as it stands, I may have a little bit of time. Okay. What am I going to want to draw and in what order? I'm going to want to draw Helix next. Draw phase. Oh, I see. Okay, so, I mean, maybe I can live, but this is just an incredible long shot, right? But the whole game was. All right, looks like I'm dead. Frustrating. Don't think I like Colonnade very much. I really like dual lands. <laughs> I don't like Colonnade, Celestial Colonnade there, being the exact reason I died. That's frustrating. Um, what dual lands could I be using that I'm not using? Because I really feel like... I feel like I'm struggling here with my mana base a little bit. A little bit more than I should be. Am I, am I using all of them? Wow, Rift Stone. There's Prairie Stream. It would have it would have come into play top there anyway. It would have made zero difference whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see I don't see any way to improve the situation. Let's just play some more. Um I want to just had the uh, had the solution. I I I was very close to to getting back into that game though, so I feel pretty good about that. I drew both of my my fatties and still found a way to like make it all work out pretty well. It's a little sketchy. Um, opponent's going first, so it's pretty good. Yeah. I feel like I've hurt my mana base a lot with the changes I've made. I, I'm supposed to be getting something out of this, but I, 
I'm not sure that I am. I uh, might be willing to wasteland him here, but actually I'm just going to do this. So the thing is, I was thinking I could wasteland him here, but um, actually the other play was maybe Hallowed Fountain so that I could go turn to Sterling Grove if I draw a green source. It might have been good too. Uh, but if I don't wasteland them here, one, two, three, four, mystical teachings for, oh, if my opponent misses a land here, I'm definitely wasting them. Okay. All right, land no play is interesting. Hmm. Land no play is slow. Should have held the sanctuary, I guess. So I had no play. Um, hmm. All right. Go get a Tundra and be right back where we started, I guess. See what my opponent's doing here. Um, so I could impulse for two with Worldly Council, or I can wait. I mean, I want to tithe. I want to get green white and uh, green black and set myself up be in a real good spot. That'll let me, uh, a green black would allow me to uh, impulse for four, a proper impulse. So. And if I do it, well, I can't do it in response to the to the windswept and still get my third land. So I gotta let this resolve. Unfortunately, it means my opponent can get blue and possibly stop my tithe. It, they also have the potential to be, to just play that, that stupid bird, the two one with flash. So I've got to watch out for that as well. So I may just mini pulse here. I'm concerned about the bird. Okay. That that one I don't fully understand, but I do accept. Let's go get some lands. So we'll get white, green, and white, black. And then I'm going to play the less important land. Um, I cannot... Mystic Sanctuary turn one was really bad. That was the wrong play. Should have led with Hallowed Fountain. Anyway, it's it's slowed my whole game down. But I'll go Scrubland there, and then um, that way if my opponent does strip mine the Scrubland, um, you know, I've got the Savannah, which is the more important one. Strix. Strix. You definitely can have an Oath creature. All right, that evasive action's looking pretty good right now. I don't want to do this. There's no way I can do this. Never mind. So I can teachings and go get force of will on my opponent's turn. But I think I'd rather just grove. And I have the ability to um, fetch up an oath whenever I, whenever I get around to it. Like if there's a, if there's a moment where it seems like my opponent might be weak to oath, boom, I go get it. Um, this twenty turn clock isn't gonna get him there, so it's just a huge liability against oath right now. I do need to get. Um, teachings to fire off though um, so that I can either start a counter war that I lose and uh, 
followed up with Jace, which allows me to win, or Okay, that was excellent. I, I like that because now I have a little insulation against days. Resto. I suppose I could have uh, killed that thing, but I don't see that as a really good use of my time or mana. Bad thing here too is, so my opponent's down a um, source of blue. So he's down to just two blue. So a, a counter war here is, or any counter spell here is gonna make things a little tricky for my opponent. Hmm, there's the third blue. That's less true now, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, if he goes for a play. Yeah, spend that mana. No? So he's already winning, so unless this play like helps him really get ahead, it's it's not good for him, right? Because it's just you're gonna be winning winning more, winningest, winning her. None of it makes a lot of sense. See if I can get him to tap some mana. If my opponent doesn't tap any mana, then I get to go Oath with double counter spell back up. If my opponent does tap mana, I get to go Oath with counter spell back up. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and take the damage here. I hate to do it, but uh, Spell Pierce is a card, so... It'd be nice if I could play Abrupt Decay right now, but I cannot. Alright, so opponent's tapped out, so if the oath sticks, I can try to protect the oath but the other thing I could do is I could just play Jace right now. I think my opponent will try to counter this if they can. So that means that they probably can't. So I could actually bounce, like bounce Restoration Angel with Jace, or I could just like play Jace and plus it up and have access to, you know, I, I think what I do is I bounce Restoration Angel here. Um, I, I don't know though. I mean, it, it reduces the clock on me by a lot. It does give my opponent a way to like kill Strix. I guess I'll, I, I guess I won't do any of that. I guess my next play is possibly like Jason and Abrupt to Care, Jason and Evasive Action. So I suppose I won't do any of that, but um, I would have very much liked to have teachings into a, a Force of Will for the Sphinx to uh, be useful in my hand. I do also have to worry about just dying to Price of Progress since my opponent's running it. Phase. I'll just copy and paste that. Uh, if they've got removal plus removal type thing, I can go chase, bounce this, and then d decay that, and maybe maybe that gives me a way in to the game if the oath goes away. <laughs> Not super happy about this at all. All right, so I've got spell pierce mana up. I don't have mana leak or evasive action mana up. Cool. Okay, it looks like it's going to resolve. So if that's going to happen, then I want a teachings right now. I 
And the reason I want to do it right now is I want to go get force of will, and I want to get it before I mill it into my graveyard. It's funny, like the card I always want to hit first is Angel. There we go. That just makes everything so much easier. Basic Island's nice. I didn't think about this, but the damage being redirected to the Angel means that the Death Touch creature will actually kill it. So I should have actually not done that. I needed to Abrupt Decay the Baleful Strix. But on the other hand, I'm not going to die here. Like, I take no damage from combat. Uh, you kill my Archangel, and then I go get uh, Grizzlebrand. So if he sends... Yeah. So I'll probably just... Yeah, I'll probably just do this. The angel's dead anyway. I'll leave him with just the one creature. If uh, my opponent doesn't oath, like if they if they kill their own creature, I'm certainly not going to worry too much about that. I've got Sphines, so I can go get like a Wasteland and a Strip Mine here, or I can go get an Oko and, uh, you know, Dak Faden or Sterling Grove, something like that. So that's fine. We'll just push, we'll just push Oko into play and, and call it good. The deck's designed to win if it oaths, right? So, in the most, for the most part, I should. So, I actually don't want to oath right now. I want to. I've got seven, so I want a Sphines, and I also want a Jays. Um, I want to Jays the uh, Grizz back into my hand, but I think Sphines is the card I'm going to play. I want to. Three, three, uh, let's see, black, green. The only way I can leave this untapped is like this. Okay, let's go get, let's go get uh, Oko. And yes, I would like to use the ability, and let's go get Sterling Grove to lock that oath down. Create some food. Cool. So, tough spot now. Hard for my opponent to deal enough damage to... Uh, Kill me with direct damage with Oko running. Hard for them to get the Oath off the board. Not impossible though, because there is um, the one that doesn't target that I took out of my deck for the Idyllic Tutor, which is probably a mistake. I don't know. Hmm. I didn't force will the angel, right? So the angel's dead. So if I reshuffle, I'm just going to get a new graveyard. That's just not terrible. Blessing. Okay, three, three, no abilities. Land. 
and and I can just slam the um, black black two more blacks for Grizz. I could just slam the uh, Sphinx here. This is okay right now. Um, this is always pretty good, right? So just Jason then kill this thing is fine with me. I want to get I want to get my uh, cards back into the um, deck. Is it punishing fire? No, it's it's lightning helix. Okay, well the Jace is dead. Uh, so I want to get Grizzlebrand back in the deck. I want to get Sphinx back in the deck. Uh, I want to ponder away either of them, but I can also, so I'm going to save preordain for, um, not ponder, preordain. I'm going to save preordain for um, force of will or force of negation. For force of will, I can hard cast force of negation. And I can sacrifice the grove to uh, go get moat. So... Um, and that's if that's if I'm not activating oath. But what I want to do is activate oath and then go get moat. Or or we'll just stack up uh, threats. I'm good with that. This is a weird bounty thing. Uh, just going to turn that into a creature with no abilities. It's all fine. Oko mode is also just so gross because you can just drop their flyers to the ground, you know? All right, don't want to draw Grizzle Brand, so let's get rid of that. Turn that thing off so they don't get any card drawing. And then one, two, three, four. Let's get the old moat down. And I still got Force of Will plus Force of Negation here, so looks pretty good. Let's yield to that business. I love the life here, so I'm more than happy to have that go away, and then I can just use Grizzlebrand's life gain to... Uh, I can draw extra cards, and lots of good things happen now. What did I get? Yeah, I got Grizz. So now I can loan my opponent. So we'll do that. So it looks pretty good. And then... Um, loan. I'm going to go get... There's always targets, right? Uh, Alright, so we're going to go get Wasteland. Strip Mine. And Celestial Colonnade. Not that it matters too much. I suppose I could have got Caracas right there. Probably would have been better. But, uh, nah, it's fine. 
Okay. Good stuff. Once we get to that mid game, I mean, this deck does what it needs to do, you know? It's just, we gotta live long enough to get there. I do think the Idyllic Tutor is probably better than the, um, the, um, Exile card. <sighs> uh, maybe playing Bolt is right. Um, there's also like Anguish on Making and some of those other type of cards. So, Explosives was really good in that one circumstance. I mean, it almost got me out of the one game that I've lost tonight, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, the other thing is, is Idyllic Tutor really better than, say, just a uh, a cheap digging spell that um, isn't tutoring directly for what I want, but that's a hand. Oh, I'm going second again. So is Idyllic Tutor better than a card like Thirst for Knowledge? You know, go get Oath of Druids is pretty good, or go get Moat, but um, Thirst turning junk into cards, and the cards you draw could potentially go get Oath or Moat, and or just be what you need, you know, to begin with. So I don't, I don't really know. Um, I think. Demonic Tutor effects in a deck that essentially is combo probably are best, but a lot of things I haven't really gotten to do in these games. Mana Drain's definitely one of them. I don't understand why Lava Spike is in that deck at all. Uh, I'm going to use Windswept Keith here because if if there's nothing to mana drain, I want to go get um, Tropical, and then I can cancel for four. I could wait and get Tropical and then get um, Blue Red out and dig for five. But I, I want... Uh, okay, son. I'll say hi to him. Excuse me. I'll say hi to him later, son. I'm, I'm, on, I'm using my headset, okay? Okay, that is a lovely target for Mana Drain into Jace. Let's go. Uh, same reasoning, though. I'm going to go get this. Um, I guess I wouldn't have dug for four, actually, now that I think. Oh, no, I, I could have gone for um, green, white, and then dug for four, and then played this. Anyway, uh, so we'll go for Mana Drain. Oh, wow. Really wants that 3-3 three, three with no abilities. Okay, you got it. Or no card drawing or whatever. I can understand it though. It's a mana drain and mana drain is scary. I, I might have, if I have Force of Wilder, I just let it go and then force whatever the follow up is. But, um, but no, that's that's good. All right. Could uh, I could balance? Hold on a second here. Um, I'm just gonna mute my mic for a minute here. I'm gonna play my game and just mute my mic. So, uh, until, until things quiet down a little bit here. Um, question is, do I want to balance? Don't, I don't know. I might. One, two, three. I might, but then again. Okay, well, it just got quiet anyway. Hard for me to think. Um, I don't think I'm going to balance. I think I'm going to dig. That Mantis Rider does have the ability to kill me, though. That is that is an ability it has. A Lava Spike Mantis Rider draw. It's interesting. It's scary. I'm going to go digging. I definitely don't want Archangel. Five, 
Fire skid. I kind of want... Play Jace and plus it. But then again, I kind of want to factor fiction. Um, my opponent has a counter spell. Playing tapping out here is pretty much bad news. I think it's better to run, not give him access to that mana. Try to factor fiction. during their upkeep. So if they've got a counter, they probably want to burn it now, but then they don't get to uh, use the mana on their turn unless it's mana drain. Okay. Before he sees what he draws, so maybe he has a better play and he's kicking himself right now. Um, that's why we do it during upkeep. We don't know. Going to have to, uh, going to have to balance my life total is within killing range, I guess. Or I can Jace, but doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look good. Um, if I balance and I only have one card left in hand. Uh, burn, Rego, burn doesn't do anything. Rego, council, dig doesn't do anything. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, that guy was, this play was better than it looked. Okay, so what do I need to do? Balance? Keep chase? Hope, hope something works out, I guess. And do it this way, and then, okay. That sucks. I lost three cards. Regrowth, but one's Punishing Fire, one is Sphinx, so really I lost a card, but it would have been Regrowth for Mana Drain, so. I don't think my opponent's got anything, though. I, I think he's out of gas. Okay. I'm gonna actually plus up here. I need to protect myself and my situation. No, you can definitely have a daze. And this does a good job of that. Because um, my opponent has just enough burn to do half my life total, like a lightning bolt or something. Then Jace would have died there. But now, okay, my opponent has daze and then don't know what the rest is, but let's, let's get going here. Um, All right, looks like we turned the corner. Uh, opponent's last card is Days, which isn't gonna affect anything I've got. And I can now shuffle away. Uh, what do I want? Blue, white, blue, red for Punishing Fire. There we go. So now I've got, I'm using life, but I can fetch shuffle. And this counters for five, so it's going to be tough to resolve anything. Yeah. So we were going to shuffle um, and then look at the best four cards of this. Pretty good stuff. Incidentally, um, the Sea Beyond effects are very nice with um, Ren and Six. That was a tough one. Pretty interesting, though. So, yeah, what do I, I want? I like Tutor. How much do I want it? I just don't know because I'm not getting games against aggro. You know, these are aggro control games and that makes it really hard to know. 
I really like cards like Archmage's Charm. I like I like the removal spell I had. I like um I mean there's a lot of quality cards that it could be. I like Jace Bellarin. <laughs> three mana planeswalkers. I like the um the one that so the Teferi, the three mana Teferi, like I'd really like the three mana Teferi, um, but it's like sixty bucks online or something, and I, I, I just I spent so much trying to put this deck together and I, I ran out, so I can't even test it. Uh, well, I want the two mana elephant card and I can't test that. So I'm short. Um there is Kaya is pretty good. Alright. Anyway. Oh wow, what a hand. What a hand. Now, this is one of the reasons to keep this play the stack hands like this. Um, I could have gone with first turn top, but I want a vampiric here if my opponent has a duress. I probably want a vampiric if they don't. <laughs> to be honest. I mean, I can, I can attempt to win the game here. So a tutor, land, oath, right? And then my opponent has like a turn to live. But I, I don't love that because it's super risky and I don't really have a reason to take that risk. Um, like, I can still do that kind of a thing here. But this way, you know, I can maybe set up something where my opponent makes a play and I I I set up something a little bit more decent. Okay. So that'll that'll have to do. I have a creature land. So what I want to do is I want to I want to top and I want to vamp and I want to make sure I do it in the right order. So if I use top and then draw a card um, now and then vampiric during upkeep, that's probably the best. I get the best of three this way. Which is probably Sterling, Sterling Grove. It does protect uh, the oath. To some extent, anyway. So I'm hoping my opponent kills Harsh Mentor for me, and then I can just punish him with the Forbidden Orchard into Sterling Grove play. I'm hoping they don't kill Oath, obviously. Doesn't have white mana for Vindicate. Didn't have black and, like, if Vindicate was the card that he's holding that might have killed Oath, my opponent didn't have black or white, so they weren't going to be able to, it would have been very difficult, you know, they would need, like, a Mox Diamond or something to be able to um, Vindicate the Oath. So, and if it's something else, well, we'll see. So I think Harsh Mentor is dead now. Fire Ice, yeah, Arc Trail, there you go. Beautiful. So that's what we wanted. Use the card up and then boom. Boom. And now the oath is safe. And the situation is dire for my opponent. I mean, he can keep killing his guys. So the card, by the way, that counters this, that you can put in your aggro deck, is uh, Goblin Bombardment. Um, I used to play it. I think my other aggro deck probably would end up playing it. Um, besides the fact that you can just kill an oath, but like to stop this Forbidden Orchard effect, uh, Goblin Bombardment just 
lets you sack a creature to deal a point of damage to any target. So uh, you just uh, kill creatures as fast as I can produce them, which forces me to find a solution to that thing. Sure, sure. But without a wasteland or a strip mine, that won't matter too much. Dak Faden goes real well with the balance in my hand. Hmm. All right. Well, that's a little rough. I could balance to uh, take my opponent down to one card, but I can't go down to zero. And if I can't go down to zero, Sucks that I drew a land there, kind of. But this is fine. I get the orchard thing going. The problem with mana drain in that deck is that, uh, like in my deck, I have three gigantic threats that I can mana drain into, and that deck doesn't, right? It's the advantage that the oath has as far as using mana drain goes. Yeah. There's just nothing to do with the colorless mana because you can't afford to build your deck around mana drain because there's no other fast mana. So you can't build your deck around um, soul ring and friends in order to take advantage of mana drain like you want to. Such a dumb combo. Take another card out of your hand? Sure. Oh, I guess I didn't take anything out of hand, but... My goodness, I do not want more lands. I'm not willing to sacrifice Grove when... or this Grove. Got a lot of Groves over here. You know, I could just die to Price of Progress. I just realized that I'm not playing smart here. There's a very easy way I can just lose this game. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like Kaya. Devil's pretty good. It's double black. I feel like it'd really be a card that would be really good is the Liliana Planeswalker, but it's it's double black. But the one that where we discard so I can combo with Punishing Fire and Loam and such. <sighs> but double black is harsh. Um, I could just get recoil, but that's a silly. I don't tutor would be better in most cases if I'm going to play that junk. Tension Sphere is really good as a tutor target for removal, but I'd rather just have Aura of Silence. So I don't know. A little bit of card draw. A little more counter magic slash card draw. Jeez, Balurin. The other thing I thought about is I could run As For Told and I could run um, the Suspend cards. As For Told's just one of those cards that it deals with a lot of... Uh, so I could run an extra Balance and an extra Ancestral. I, I did have Ancestral in here after all. If I take... If I take Idyllic out and I run as for 
told. Of course, I'm taking out an enchantment and putting in one I want to draw. Run Ancestral and run Balance number two. The other thing is that gives me a set of explosives. Uh, maybe. Second balance over explosive, probably decent. It, it obviously helped me in that one deck, that one board state that I don't ever want to find myself in again. But <laughs> overall, I'm not sure how much it would help. Um, if I were to do that, I have one more card I need to cut. Yeah, it does let me go get, like in that situation, I could just go get As For Told, start ticking up if I draw one of these cards or whatever. Uh, what would I cut? I don't know. Or maybe I just don't run the second balance, but I do run the Ancestral. Just because Ancestral early is good, and then mid-game, if I pull an As For Told, I can... Toss it out with that. As we're told, the thing about it is that uh, it's a way to get out from under a uh, Blood Moon if you can get it in a play off a single basic island, um, which which can be relevant. Um, I'm going to keep this because it's got lots of early interaction, but it's not a good hand, actually. Uh, because it doesn't have any way to go to Oath. So maybe Idyllic Tutor stays. God dang it. I really need to figure this out. Okay. Now it has a way to go get Oath. I mean, the other thing I could do is go get uh, Library of Alexandria if my opponent plays too slowly. <laughs> sure. Jeez. I mean... The other thing I could do is tap library and draw force of will. Let's try that. <laughs> so if I remand this, um, I can still library. Oh, wow. Force of Will, huh? Okay. And if it doesn't resolve, I can still library. I just don't library for that one turn. So, sure, I guess. Uh, so, I can Imperial Seal, sort of. I'm going to go get um, Underground, because I don't want my opponent to hit it with the creature. Uh, but yeah, basically what I want to do is... Um, Imperial Seal into an Oath, I think, or into Sword Supply Shares, maybe. I mean, I've got Library, so I don't really need to Oath, I just need to win. I mean, I just need to kind of do nothing, honestly. Thief of Sanity really annoys me. All right, so let's muddle in a volcanic. Assuming my opponent got a counter spell here of some sort. But still going to play this. Okay, so yeah, I would, it wouldn't suck if it was Abrupt Decay, but I, I just need, let's go see. I could figure out what the card is, but, nah. Hmm.
Let Gracchus here. If my opponent has remand, I'll I'll want to be able to play plashers and then play it again. If this doesn't work, it's Thief of Sanity is going to keep up with the Library of Alexandria, no problem. So. I'm just going to play the card that I have. No, Mana Drain. Interesting. Okay. Bad news for me. I guess Abrupt Decay would have been the right choice. Could have got Abrupt Decay in my hand and then waited. cast that card so they can't actually get a strip mine off of me. They can mill flashback cards. They're not careful. And if they cast a card with flashback, well it goes into my graveyard and then it well it has flashback, so best thing they can do is probably leave it in exile. Yeah. Okay. Is one of my is one of my two cards a counter spell? Is one of their cards a counter spell? I, I don't really know. Maybe I just wait. in order to have uh, evasive plus counter. <sighs> I don't really like that. Because uh, if I wait, I'm just giving my opponent a chance to untap extra mana, and I'm also giving them the ability to uh, not only untap extra mana, but uh, if these cards are like, say, a three drop, well. <laughs> All right, so I've got two exiled cards. I should probably figure out what they are in a tournament. I, I would do that, but geez. Okay, stupid Mantis Rider. Is it the one that killed me last time? I think it did. I don't like that card. So it could get rid of six on board, but it comes at a price. Of uh, giving my opponent a creature that I don't really want to pay. So to use some removal already. I would like to get Renin Six down. Pick up the Wasteland. Time is short. Um, I do have Zern Orb though, so. An Impulse is good. Um, I want to play the Zern Orb first, because I'd like to tap the library and see if I can find a source of green or red. Okay, well, uh, green rather for a Ren and Six, but this is fine. So at least with mode, I don't have to worry about my opponent's next threat. Sure. Uh, if if it's if it's not if it doesn't fly that is. Let's 
Let's go for a dig. Explosives on three could be good. Ponder could be better. Now I've got a fight over explosives on three though. Whereas Ponder might just make it so I don't have to fight at all. Oh, Sanctuary is very good. Oh, I like that. How about if I draw Swords to Plowshares? So if I tap to draw that and I play red, red, white, blue explosives on three, uh, then I've got multiple outs here, but I do have the Zern Orb, so I kind of don't want to do that. Man, Mystic Sanctuary is so good. Going for it. Um, all right, with teachings on the stack, I want to draw a card and I want to get this thing off the board. Um, using the red. Okay, go go get them. So the good thing here, I can use Forbidden Orchard to play around in six, shoot the token, or I can use um, play moat. My opponent probably won't fight me over a moat. I then Forbidden Orchard can play around in six and I can just start picking up Wasteland. I can also just go Forbidden Orchard, run in six, pick up a Wasteland. Ah, yeah, that's a good that's a good choice. Get that off the board and then kill me is a good plan. Uh, so I can pick up some man. I can pick some life here, um, or I can try to protect that thing. If I try to protect it, oh, I can run in six in Mystic Sanctuary, sack a Desert Orb, and then yeah, I'm gonna try to protect it. Uh, so blue, white, black, red. So evasive for four. Opponent went to a lot of trouble to go get that uh, disenchant after all. Oh, that was my mystical teachings. Oh, I see. Balance. Balance the Zernor about. Well, if I mana leak that, um, then what happens is. I'm off library, so that was good for him to do that. Uh, top decking right there was really good for me though, so let's let's take a point. Go get Savannah. Wait, what? Oh, Taiga. I guess I already burned a Savannah. We'll get Wasteland. Um, I could play Moat, but I also have Teaching Slashback here. And uh, that, would, that would get another card in my hand that I can get back on Library. I do want to eat this Sanctuary, though, and I want to pick it up with Ren and Six, and I want to play it and get uh, Counterspell back in my hand ASAP. So. Ah. Just let it happen. 
He did his one job. I got a wasteland. I can use uh I can put, possibly use teachings to just recur him if I really would like to, but I'm I'm doing well here and I I want to make sure that I get back into library mode and I want to not die. So what I want to get up to is like library forbid here. Okay. So I do need the library, which means I've got to wait just a little bit longer. I should have done the sanctuary play. At least I could have used sanctuary to recur. Now I'm off it. That sucks. Indicates Urn Orb. All right, let's eat the sanctuary. Let's eat. Oh, what are we going to eat? Plateau. I'm worried about price of progress. Let's eat. Uh, Got blue red, so let's eat Howard Fountain. I see eight damage here. And I could eat underground. I want to get up in life. Um, kill Caracas or underground. I think I'll kill. Underground. I've got the orchard. Okay, so I'm up to 11. Impressive progress to 6 now. Okay, cool. So the life total is getting much better. Deed is good. When it likes balance. That, that's kind of neat. I don't think he used to play balance. Uh, I think I don't want to... I'm not sure if I want to wasteland here. Actually, I do. So Pernicious Deed will actually kill a man land um, where explosives won't because it kills creatures with... Converted mana cost X or less. It doesn't say each non-land. So what I want to do is kill the... Um, I probably want to get Caracas off the board, to be honest. It gives my opponent flexibility that I don't want them to have. For example, they might get... Uh, uh, the 3-1 uh, Fairy out. And I don't want that. Be able to start recurring. Like protecting it with their own Caracas. And of course, I am holding Grizzlebrand, so. Okay, so that comes down. We're going to snag that right now. Okay. Now, as long as my opponent doesn't make me discard, I'm back into library mode, so we're not off it yet. Pyro's cool. Last card in hand. Discard, of course. <laughs> it's hilarious. Of course. Yes. Yep. I'm just going to wait a turn. I'll pay through life to draw two cards for the rest of the game. So. Hopefully my opponent didn't draw a counter there because it gets real stupid if they did. Okay, good. Draw and... Hmm. 
All right, so good. Take a little more damage here, but, um, but then it should be taking over the game, hopefully. This does put me into range of price of progress once again. But two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I mean, I, I can't understand how it was even in that deck in the, to begin with. I would have never guessed. But now I have to play around a card that seems a little silly. Anyway, I'm um, going to go get some basic lands. and haven't found a blue card for that yet. Uh, maybe I should just play Vents because I, I want to pop it on two. And I'm not going to be able to, yeah. So I'm just doing this because I want to blow, I want to blow, I don't want to. I have to blow Pernicious Deed, and uh, that means I won't be able to cast Force Will anyway, since I can't seem to find a blue card or any card, actually, other than Lance right now. So... Nice thing is I can pop this on two, and if my opponent has the stifle effect, I can just pop it on two in response. I think. Oh no, it's a sacrifice as part of the cost. Okay, well that worked out fine. Good, Vindicate for a man land if it comes up. Uh, I need to start getting black into play as much as I can. so that I can hard cast Grizzlebrand with Force of Will back up at some point. I need two more black sources. Green, black, and I don't know what the other one's going to be. Or that. That's a pretty good way to finish this game up. All right, so what are the black sources? I have one, two, three. Yeah, Badlands, Bayou. Okay, so we can we can do it. It can be done, or I can do it. So I can deed, or will, problem is, still don't have a blue card, so, all right, I might actually not, that card's too good of a blue card to force with, especially with a hand like this. Okay, so I don't need Orchard. <laughs> Fetch land is fine, land is good, and... Do I want to Oko? Kind of. Yeah. The Sanity was pretty funky. I I have this card exiled. Okay, so they've already they've already used the two Thief of Sanity Sanity cards against me, so yeah, I'm in pretty good shape now. Um this doesn't get black, but at that point I'm kinda off that plan. All right, green, uh, blue, one. That leaves me with grudge and flashback on the grudge. Boom, gain three life, pass. I've got force of will back up. Um, so that's it. Library away. <laughs> Yeah, this wasn't, engine, engineering explosives wasn't too valuable. I was putting in cards that I thought I might prefer. Um, it was this as for told restore balance stuff. That seems a little silly. I do like ancestral vision though, and I want a three drop. I just don't know what it is. And maybe it is idyllic tutor. It probably is. I really think Thirst, though, is the right call. I, I, I don't like Idyllic Tutor very much. And Thirst just has a lot of synergy with just Loam and all the other cards that I've got in this deck. Flashback cards and everything.
All right, man. All right. Very awesome. Hopefully we'll get a chance to play some more later this week. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of like the changes here. I, I really think Thirst, this, this deck just wants to dig. Because once it gets running, as, as I kind of showed, once the deck just gets the cards, it's uh, very difficult to stop the stack from winning. Uh, it just wants to hurry up and go get its cards, but you don't want to be tapping out either. You need flexibility. Thirst for Knowledge is just such a good card because it, it just turns these junky draws into real cards. So overall, I am very happy with the deck. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, this deck's a lot less vulnerable to TNN than some decks, which is the other reason why I don't think I need the TNN defense in here. Thanks to Pernicious Deed as a sweeper, but also because you have Moat and Oath, there's a lot of ways you can just kind of punish. Um... <laughs> uh... Uh, you can get that punish off. Um... So far, so good. Very happy with the deck. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the games. This was live time. Um, I'm, I've got my foods cold, and uh, I need to spend some time with my family anyway, so this is actually a great time to cut it. But uh, super interesting. Um, the other card at red that was interesting that I considered was like Gamble, which is just crazy, but Gamble for Loam could be insane, but nah. We're good. I think I'll keep it right the way it is. I do like putting the Ancestral Vision back in. I do like putting the Thirst back in. I think taking those out was a mistake, but now it feels pretty good. I like where we're at. I wish I could have played a few more with these changes in place, but all right. Um, and that's about it. I'll, I'll chat with my buddy later. Thank you very much, 5CBS, if you're watching. And uh, thank you to everyone else for uh, your uh, support of the channel. And uh, that's all I've got. I'll see you next time.